Hello boys and girls, I'm Dan with Dan French Tax Dermy. We today are going to flesh a antelope cake. Yep, there it is. All right, right there, timer, uh, boom. Right like that, we'll see how long. <laughs> boom, just like that. All right, typically it takes me 24 minutes on average to flesh and salt an antelope cake. Um, here we go. We've got big chunks of meat. Uh, the goal is to flesh it so we can salt it so the salt draws the moisture out. No moisture, no bacteria. Happy hunters, happy me. So, here we go. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's simply, um, uh, simply uh, getting the meat off so that it can um, flesh. I pull this tight, and when this is all tight, life is good. When it's all uh, soggy, uh, it's not as good. Uh, it doesn't, right there, there's a little bit of meat. I'm gonna take it off, but maybe, maybe not. That's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Salt will penetrate that. There's a dry spot. That's a whole waiting to happen if I hit that. All right, again, I pull it tight, pull it tight. Um, da -da -da -da, just like that. But you gotta keep the hide tight so that you can do what you gotta do. And I often say, do quality work, do it quickly. If you do quality work, it takes you all day. You suck! Um, so, all right. Pull the big chunks. And I'm going faster than normal just because um, otherwise you'll get bored real quick. Big chunk of meat. Again, pull it tight. Keep it flat. Not a, a wrinkle in it, if you know what I'm saying. The uh, saying, perfectionism is the enemy of profit, and it is, you could flesh this and do it perfect, and you make no money because you spent so much time making it just perfect, and there it goes. Hey, here we go, because I know you want to know, and uh, here we go, antelope history lesson, or antelope whatever lesson. Uh, deer, elk, moose, mountain lion, bear, they all have uh, dew claws. Antelope does not have a dew claw. Don't know why. Don't know what it would do with a dew claw if it did have a dew claw. Uh, which reminds me, how much brew would Hebrew brew if the Hebrew could brew brew? Just a thought. Um, all right. And here we go. Antelope, uh, their hair is junky. Watch right here, it pulls out real easy, just like that. It is corrugated, it is hollow. That helps keep it warm in these cold winters. Also, antelope has a heart the size of an elk heart to pump all that blood to help them stay warm during the winter time. Also, antelope, you can sell deer hide, elk hide, um, moose hide. You cannot sell an antelope hide because antelope have blood veins that run in the leather. See the blood veins? They run in the leather and somehow that uh, wrecks the tanning process. And uh, you can tan them, but it's just splotchy. It's not nice and clean. All right, there's that. We have antelope. All your bucks will have this black cheek, park, right, uh, cheek patch. Don't know what they use that for, but we're gonna skin that out. If you don't skin it out, here, let me show you, show you something. All right, so I'm gonna flesh this. It looks like you fleshed, you done good. You didn't. The first bunch of antelope I did, I left that gland in there. And uh, yeah, then I got out of town real fast. You can feel it, There's a, it's a muscle there. And let me see, can I show you something? Eh, who cares? All right, uh, so there's a gland there that I'm going to cut out. And they, I think that smelly gland impresses the girls. They say, ooh la la. Let me see, antelope, what else about antelope? They're the second fastest animal, animal in the world. Uh, for a sustained run, they can outrun any animal. Uh, antelope is its own species. There's, it's not related to anything else. It's officially not an antelope. It's a, I don't know. Um, um, antlers. Antlers fall off every year. They grow back. It's the fastest growing bone. Horns do not fall off. The only exception in the world is the pronghorn antelope. Uh, it falls off every year. I know, I know you guys want to know this. Um, uh, antelope horns. Oh, it's a prong horn. It's the only horn in the world that um, has a prong that has more than one. You know. Okay, there's one uh, gland, and that is a hoe. All right, here we go. The other one over here, you can squeeze it and you can feel it. Right there, I can feel it. I think I can. That's an ear hole. 
opposed to a, oh, never mind. Um, uh, I'll be here all week, folks. All right. Uh, I can feel it in there. And that there is another hoe. I had an employer once, I said, you know what the hoe is? And he said, don't talk about my mama that way. All right. <laughs> that is another hoe. Doggone it. I'm not good, but I'm fast. I'm here to tell you. All right. I can feel, I'm feeling that heavy gland in there. Uh, antelope, the only animal in the world that does not have, only animal in North America that does not have a gallbladder. Not sure what it would do with it, if it did have one. But, let me see, what else about antelope? I don't know. Uh, 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 there are more antelope in Wyoming than there are in people. At least that's what they say. Gotta be true. Read it on the internet. But remember what Abe Lincoln said. You cannot believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs> Small chuckles. <laughs> All right, come on. That's tough. It's fighting me here. There it is. It's just a real thin gland. Uh, whenever I take new people hunting, I always tell them uh, when they shoot an antelope that they have to rub that black cheek patch for good luck for the rest of the day, and they rub it, of course, and then I have them smell the finger, and I laugh, and we all laugh. And... <laughs> Uh, come on. This is a steal. I did not steal the steal. It's not the kind of guy I am. But I do have a YouTube video on how to sharpen a knife. You can go there if you want. We also have a great YouTube video that I've made on pole dancing. I do uh, I do uh, entertaining entertainment for nursing homes uh, and. Uh, all right, she was. All right, come on. That is a huge cheek patch. Just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. Showing the other side. That's a big honker there. All right. I become bored. I'm going to call it good right there. And all right, we're on to on to here. So all of this is a perfect no. My goal is to have salt get it out. Uh, penetrate. So here's a chunk of meat. Salt penetrate that. It's not going to be a problem. If that was a chunk of fat that's a different thing. Uh, salt will not penetrate fat. Okay, there's a bigger chunk than what I want. I'm going to take that out. <laughs> yeah, I missed that some, huh? And yeah, you no, yeah, you know, after you do a couple thousand antelope, you start getting fast. Basically, after I don't know, somewhere north of thirty some years, I run out of ways of doing it wrong. But I can still put a hole in. Okay, here's the ear. Uh, I'm gonna go back here, flesh this, uh, uh, flesh this part out there. Try to leave it all in one big piece. <laughs> Oh man. Oh well. I won't tell. There we go. Pulling it down the ear, pulling it down the ear. What other antelope trivia is there? I don't know. All right, that is skin down the ear some, pulling it away, pulling it away, pulling it away. On all critters, deer, elk, antelope, you have um, uh, this little bump right here, cartilage right there. That's where the tip of the ear, that, that, the, that right there goes in. Right there is this little bump. I slice that in half, just through the meat, not the cartilage. Now it gives me a handle to hang on to, and I try to pull this off all in one piece. Not that it's important to pull it off in one piece, uh, other, it just gives you a handle. Uh, to hang on to. Turn around. And I flip it around and I leave that all big piece there starting to come apart, but that's all right. So I got something to hang on to to pull. There it is. For what it's worth, I put my hand knife this way, all right, come up and I cut that much off. I don't need all that stuff sticking there. Ideally, you got something about the size of a dime. Okay. Uh, now do this part here. Uh, be nice if I can do this up. Western up. So you gotta have one of these. You gotta have one of these. <laughs> and you can hold that right there. And uh, da, 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 da. you got them uh, 
proctology tools, which I like. Um, is there a we proctology? We gotta have them. Little one. Is there a little one over there? We don't use them anymore. I know this part of the wheat does. Only on antelope. There we go. Let me see that thing. Mm-hmm. This is a proctology tool. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. You know, proctologists were the people in doctor college who got the lowest grades. Okay. So I pull that tight. Uh, it, I find if you do this on deer and elk, you just tear holes in them. And um, so I've stopped using them on deer and elk. But antelope ears are smaller. Um, uh, antelope trivia. They uh, got crazy, incredible eyesight. They say when you're looking at them through their, your scope, they are reading the brand name on your scope. Uh, they don't use their ears for hearing, so they got little ears. Um, uh, they don't use their nose for smelling stuff, so they got little noses. But they got great eyesight. Um, uh, da, da, da. Uh, antelope like to, so I, I use this here again with the aid of that. And there it is. All right. Um, stick that in there and pry it out. Mm -hmm. There's that. Uh, yeah, antelopes stay alive by their sight. By uh, they, they don't live in trees. They live out in the wide open. They like hanging out on top of hills. And one ear down. All right, sometimes these can be real irritating, especially when they're irregular. All right. So that's the ear there, I'm uh, skinning all around it. Coming over here. I catch myself humming, I hum. Sometimes in church, the wife will say, quit humming. Yes, dear. <laughs> Two words for a successful marriage. Yes, dear. <laughs> if you get much beyond three words, you're in trouble. Yes, dear. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. You're right. Just stick with those. <laughs> yeah, but honey, that's three. It ain't going to go well. All right, there's that. All right, so i got to skin down the ear. That's cartilage right there stuff. All right, again... One more time, pay attention this time. You got this little V right there, right there. You got this little bump right there. And I slice that little bump right there. Not through the cartilage, just through the meat. Now I got something to hang on to. And now I can pull this and skin that, and pull it around, pull it around, and pull it around. And when you get this far, you have to go whoop. And you can practice the whoop saying, all right, there's that, there's that, all right, come on. So it all comes off in one piece there, and whammy. All right, again, I'll put my knife right there, bend it up, cut that off. Whether it's deer, elk, antelope, do the same thing. And if you do it right, you got the size of a dime right there, and you don't need all that cartilage going on down there. All right, proctology tool. Stick it up there, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Take little bites, not a big bite. Going all the way up the middle. And then I pinch this side, go off the side. <laughs> It is, and again, I'm okay using this uh, proctology tool in the ears of antelope, deer, and elk. It just uh, sometimes it'll work, and sometimes you rip this massive hole in it. So I get to the tip right there, and to finish it off, I'll take my steel and da, 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 da. push. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that. No, sir. You didn't see that. I did that to make you feel not so bad whenever you do it. All right. And now I'm going to have to work it a little extra. Don't have my fingernails. I got this glove on, which really is good. Hi, boys and girls. Uh, which is really good when doing bear because bear are slimy and slippery. It's also good when you haven't skinned a while to help you prevent um, cutting your hand. It really eliminates a lot of the dings on the fingers. All right. Idiot. Oh, just zoom up on my mistake. Just zoom right up there. All right. I'm going to, I'm here to tell you, one of these, one of those comes in real handy. All right, I've got a, that's an investment. I've worked years on that. All right, I am 
really wanting to make this happen. I think actually salt will penetrate anyways to get that to work. I'm going to just leave that because I'm massacring it more as I pull. Could split it up there. I'm going to leave that. All right. On to where are we at. There's some meat. Big chunks of meat going off. All right, we're moving on to the head. All right, does he have an eye? There's an eye right there. All right, all I'm doing is is, is cutting that eyelid open uh, just so it can accept salt uh, a little bit there. See, it's a little stuck right there, so I'm gonna make this, just cut a little bit right there. And that'll just open it up some so it'll accept salt. Pretty confident he's got another eye somewhere. There we go. And again, there's the eye. Just take uh, what I call the foreskin right here. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. Um, all right, right there like that. All right, spin around, get the other side. Uh, we're not really removing anything. We're just opening up so the salt can get in there. All right. On deer and elk, you got more meat here, but antelope, you just don't hardly have anything right there worth uh, your efforts. So who cares? All right. On to the nose, the, nose, the face, the mouth. There we go. And I, uh, okay, so slice along here. And all I want is like a half inch along here. So I'm going to make a slice all the way along here. Sharp knife is real handy, especially for this uh, uh, lip work stuff. Go right along there, go right along there. I'm going to make a trek the whole way around here, leaving on about a half inch. And even around here. <laughs> also got a YouTube video on how to cut the antlers off of a um, deer or elk. I don't think I have one for an antelope, but it's the same concept of where to cut them off, how to cut them off. All right, there's that. I've gone the whole way around. This here is the septum, um, and I'm going to slice that off, get it out of there, right down the middle of the nose. Come here, take this side off. Do, 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 do. All right, one septum down the hatch. Um, uh, since I am right here, I'm going to. So we got two nostrils. Most antelope do. Going to slice down there a little bit. Going to slice down here a little bit. This is the first antelope I've skinned out in like at least a year, so I'm a little slow. I apologize. All right, there's that. All right, now you got the corner of the mouth here. I'm going to get rid of that big chunk on this corner. You know why all these things are here and why they go that way? <laughs> Neither do I. I don't know. Uh, all right. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Big chunk. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all, right. all right. Here's that same in the other corner of the mouth. Going to get rid of all that. <laughs> the only thing more border? Border? More boring than doing taxonomy work is actually watching someone else do it. It's a rather slow process. All right, since we're here, we're on the lower lip, the lower chin. I'm going to start. No, I'm not going to do that. We're going to do this. I, so I've cut a half inch all the way around. Now I'm going to split it. And I'm going to try to split it a little bit towards this edge opposed to the other edge. But if you do right down the middle, that's fine too. But I'm going to just go the whole way around and make a little bit of splittage. Splittage. And uh, this is where a sharp knife really is important. You've got a dull knife, you're going to press hard, and then you, you go through it. And... Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Uh, as you all know, taxidermy is a dead business. It's a dying art. But, on the bright side of things, it's a whole lot easier dealing with dead animals than it is live people. No extra charge for that. All right. I think I've gone the whole way around. Now I am back on the lower chin again. Sharpen my knife again. There's a verse in the Bible where iron, in Proverbs, I think, where iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Same thing. Way back then, they had steels. 
Okay, so here's the corner of the uh, lower lip. I do this, and I skin, um, uh, so it gives me a handle since I skinned all the way around there, but I'm right down to the leather hide. Too close there. Ah, stop it. All right. And I just move it away a little bit. All the way around. There's a little chin. I'm going to come over here now and take off a big chunk. Just because I can. Go back up. Uh, underneath here. So I'm pinching with these two fingers and I'm pushing away with those three. Pinch and push. Pinch and push. By pushing away, you can see my fingers there, it keeps it tight. And uh, uh, so it makes it easier. All right. There we go. By the hair of his chinny chin chin. Once upon a time, a long time ago, it used to be impossible for man to run in under a four-minute mile. And then one year, some crazy guy did it. He ran in under four minutes. Well, within 12 months, there was like over 50 people that ran that four-minute mile when they finally realized, wow, it can be done. And I know you want to know that. Sometimes I'll do stuff and show my people just so they can realize, oh, I guess, you know, it can be done. Uh, no. Alright, now we're on to the upper, uh, uh, um, the nose part, upper snout. So I'm right up to the skin. Uh, sometimes get people, they don't want to get too close and so they leave some meat on there. Well, yeah, whatever. And... As I do more of this, I put in less holes, but today we're putting in a few holes. But don't you worry. Luke, he loves sewing up holes. Mm -hmm. Now I're up the lower lip. Ah, come on, my fingers are getting slimy. Hard to hang on to it. Mm hmm. So I'm going the whole way around it. So we got the nostrils right there. I've I've kind of made progress the whole way around it. Now I'm going to skin everything, flesh everything towards the nostril, towards the nostril, towards the nostril. Yeah. There we go. Spin it around. Come over here. All going, I'm spinning around, going towards that nostril. Now I'm going to grab hold of this chunk of meat that I've created here, at least for right now. Gives me a handle. I'm going to come back over here. Towards the nostril, towards the nostril, towards the nostril. There we go. Now I'm going to grab my chunk of meat, and uh, that's going to be my handle, and I'll finish it off. All right, one nostril down, going for the other nostril. I already sliced up here some, sliced down there some. All right, again, I'm going to go all around it. Um, all around it. Over here, push towards that nostril. And, and speed is only good once you get it figured out. You know, if, at first... Uh, you know you're not going to you're not going to be this fast and um, but then again the goals do quality work do it quickly um, if you do quality work and it takes you forever most taxidermists are way behind and they starve because they uh, 
often don't have get up to their go. And it takes a while to get here too, you know. There it is. Alright. That's that. Fair enough. Da, 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 da. Da. Alright. That is it. That is it. We are there. Let me see, just for fun, how long? Ah, 25 minutes. Gee, really took that long? <sighs> what the heck? This is so much fun. Want to solve it? Sure, why not? Let's go solve it.